Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the master of hoppets, sitting in some crazy hot weather inside right now because a thunderstorm is approaching. And I've actually got the windows and everything fully open because all bugs are kind of flown away because of what's coming. And it's hot and humid. It's 25 degrees Celsius and crazy humid. It's a uh, it's really hot for Scandinavian, even though 25 is not the worst, but it's just like, it's so freaking humid right now. It's like you can feel moisture all over your body and that calls for something to cool you down. And what better to cool you down than an ice cold beer? So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be drinking some nitro beer. This is one of the beers that I bought on Beer Republic that piqued my interest because it's a brewery I never see around anymore. Uh, it was mainly to, tr to try and get a barrel aged beer from Trillium and Big Bird. Uh, that I went on that shop, but they just had a great selection actually of more classic American beer, like Left Hand Brewing. I haven't drunk their beers in so long. So this is a bottle of their Belgian White Nitro Witbier. That just sounds nuts. So Left Hand is arguably the brewery in the States that does nitro beers the best. If you wonder what nitro beers are, nitro beers are beer that are packaged with nitrogen instead of CO2. So basically what it happens is that it creates that Guinness effect. You know Guinness, the beer, the cascading effect and, and all that you see in beers like that. So you get that really pillowy, fluffy head, soft, soft bubbles in the mouth. So it really feels like slick and whatnot. And they've really played around with using nitro in different beers. So the way to do it is that you take this beer, you cool it down to around, uh, I think it's around seven degrees Celsius, which is 40, 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And you crack it and pour it as hard as you can to activate the nitro. And I think I did it right. Because I remember one at one point I bought some kind of nitro beer a while back. I shared it with Brett. Yeah, that was a peanut butter milk stout from uh, Belching Beaver. And we shared a can. And like it was terrible at doing it that way because I didn't get the nitrogen activated. So you kind of have to activate it to get that kind of just pillowy head that sits on top. It looked even better just a little while ago um, when it was just poured out and nice and thick, but it sits like just a thick crown on top of the beer, just like a Guinness. So um, I tried to pour this as hard as I could. And wow, look at that. We got some dead yeast here in the bottom. I don't think we're gonna pour that in. But um, yeah, so I was really intrigued by this one. They also had a couple other beers on nitros. I also got one other one, which was their milk stout, but with peanut butter flavor. But this is a 4%, 4.8% bit beer uh, with coriander and orange peel. It's supposed to be super smooth, crisp, and cit with citrus and spice. And let's see if this is gonna be as good as Allagash White. So yeah, beautiful, slightly hazy otherwise, uh, golden yellow color and that pillowy white head. Let's take out the aroma on the left hand nitro vit beer. That smells pretty good, <laughs> I must say. It smells almost like a milky vit beer. I really, it's so awesome to like see brewers playing around with nitro. I think that would be something that'd be fun because like a lot of these craft canning lines now, you can get like nitrogen dosage units to attach to it. So you can play around with nitro in many different beer styles because it really, I think it can do something very nice. But you really have to build a beer designed for it as well. But big coriander and citrus zestiness, it smells ultra refreshing and crushable. My saliva is already going nuts because it's been a hot day and I brewed a big old uh, heavy adjuncted um, New England IPA today at work. So a lot of grain, a lot of flake grain, a lot of high protein grain, you know, just a long day. So this is what I feel like also the kids are asleep now. Yeah, it smells just kind of like the perfect kind of beer for this moment. There's a little bit of a crackery wheezy note, but definitely that bright citrus edge, breadiness. It smells like a pretty cracking uh, Belgian bit and to like the tartar, brighter side. And also maybe the softest hint of stone fruit and black pepper. Well, let's try it. Cheers. Now that's a little bit weird. I mean, you really need to watch yourself. I mean, okay, it's only 4.8%, so it doesn't matter, but this will be gone in seconds. I, I wanna strangle this glass of beer. Oh, this is so refreshing, God. And I have some other beers I want to try as well, but this is, I don't, I'm afraid it's going one way, one place and that's in my belly. But 
God, holy crap. So that's interesting with the nitro. It's weird because you used to wheat beer, especially Hefeweizen or Hefeweizen, uh, wheat beer is also Hefeweizen, having really high levels of CO2 with the nitrogen in this. It's really extremely soft. It's like Guinness, that soft coating mouthfeel, like so pearly and airy. And like, it feels like there's no CO2 because there's no CO2. It's the nitrogen. And the reason why it feels different is because the nitrogen bubbles are so, so fine that when you like have a sip of it, they feel very different in the mouth. mouth. They make it feel pillowy and soft. And that's why I feel like also some kind of Guinness you can just, if you can kick it back or any other of these like very famous nitrogen beers. Um, I'm just getting vibes of that here. It's just like going down like milk, big beer milk. I'll say it's not the most interesting big beer. It's pretty easy going. Um, it's crackery, doughy, wheezy. I don't think there's any oxidized kind of nuances. I just think it's dead yeast that's coagulated out here in the bottom. It looks a bit weird because it's also brown. Um, so yeah, and usually these beers are hazy with the yeast and suspension, so that's why. But like it's slightly citric, lightly coriander. -y. I think the aromas popped a bit more than the flavor, but I think that's also because you don't have the CO2 to carry it. So it feels almost every time in nitro beer is a little bit softer on the palate with the flavors, but that means just also like the drinkability of this stuff. Like it's crazy. I've, I've crushed over half the can or the bottle already. Uh, yeah, it's nuts. And I'm also using a completely random glass and I just used this. This is a stout glass that's a uh, left hand helped develop with Spiegelau and I'm just using it because it's technically a left hand developed glass. Uh, otherwise they recommended you use, I think it's just a Weizen glass. But um, this is this is nice. I mean, this is like gone. I was not planning on drinking this whole bottle, but I am definitely doing it. This is just too fucking refreshing. <laughs> it's like crackery, light, wheaty. There's limey notes, even uh, lemon, citrus, a little bit of that coriander, um, doughy wheatiness, not so much stone fruit, maybe a touch of pepper, very lightly. Very soft, light, you know, wit. But the fucking drinkability on this is massive plus points. But it's probably also because it's hot, it's been a long day, I got home from work. But um, it's nice, but it's got nothing on Allagash White. Nothing. That beer is definitely one of the better wits I've had in a long time. Let's drink the foam. The foam's pretty tasty too. I mean, look at that. Oops. Tipping over bottles and shit, only one beer in. <laughs> that looks crazy. Almost looks like a glass of milkshake. That's nice. That was definitely a good glass of beer. And if you get in this, um, you're going to be drinking it just as fast, especially if it's hot. Uh, no bitterness or anything because it's a beer as well. So it goes down like milk, beer milk. <laughs> it looks like, as I said, milk, a milkshake. Um, in terms of grade on this one, I, I crunched this. It seems like I'm praising it, but it's, it's not, like it's nothing special really, like compared to their other nitro beers. I think often with the pale beers on nitro is is interesting. And this is one of the better ones I think I've had, but this like it's almost like the Kilkenyan effect. Like it's so smooth, extremely smooth, that it's almost a little dull. Uh, I don't think it's all the way there. This is definitely more interesting than something like a Kilkenny, but it's, um, I would just like a little bit more pack and punch in one. So I wonder if like you need to use more like coriander and things like that. Like just amplify your raw materials a bit more if you do nitro versions because you're not gonna get the same uplifting effect. Like if you ever drink beer from a tank that's not carbonated, you see that, like it feels like a black and then the CO2 comes and it helps carry the flavor and the aroma and things change. Um, but I'm actually still debating like 88, 87, maybe even just because of the situation, like a 90, but I, I think 88 and 87, something like that is a good grade. It's nice, but like, it's not the best you can get. It's more of the novelty of the nitro that's fun here. But uh, I think you should check it out. And I think it definitely, you should definitely check out their nitro milks out because that beer is pretty much an American icon. Uh, it's part of the big nitro uh, craze that was at one point where everyone was trying to do nitro beers. Not as big anymore, but nitro can be really good if it's done right. So yeah, 
Uh, if you guys had a chance to try the left hand growing Belgian white nitro wheat beer, let me know what you thought of it. And uh, as always, remember to comment, subscribe, share the Facebook fan page, and Twitter, and Instagram. Give the video a thumbs up, enjoy it, and ring the bell for future notifications of our videos. And I'm gonna try and drink a little bit of beer foam. <sighs> Say cheers and see you guys in another beer review.